the dope Dream Team. It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with I investigated the most obese city in America. I'm kind of scared to look at it, but we got to. Before we jump in, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, get a video, a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Oh my god! Fat people. Oh Over my god! percent of America is obese, putting almost That's crazy. one of every two Americans at extreme risk of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, and death. But I wondered why are Americans getting so oh fat? So gosh. I drove to McAllen, Texas, the fattest. That is just legit scary, bro. And why the fattest city in America gotta be in Texas? The great, the great state of Texas, my home state. State that I love. Why I gotta be in Texas? But gosh, these people are big. City in America, six years in a row, to see if I could find any answers. But first, I needed some breakfast. What a burger. What do people usually get for breakfast here? Uh, number 21. Okay. So people usually get this for breakfast. Yeah, it's very popular. 980 yeah. calories. Really? Yeah. All right, McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, the guy in front of us is a pretty big dude. What did the last guy get? I'll get whatever he got. He got a bacon and cheese with a thousand bacon. Thank you. Calories in this meal, it's probably a thousand. Breakfast number three. Menu's looking fattening. You like to try the loaded breakfast? Is that what a lot of people get? Yeah. All right, breakfast for real. After scarfing down a fattening thousand calorie plus breakfast an average American might eat on their way to work, I wondered if the local restaurants here were any healthier. What do people typically get here for breakfast? Dave's, Dave's breakfast, two eggs. Dave's breakfast? Yo quiero uno, por favor. Ah, See, God dang. It's a big old breakfast. Yeah, it is. Mmm, my God. It's like a fried bomb of goodness. We got pancakes, Ooh. sausage, bacon, eggs, this and that. My guess is probably 3,000 calories right here. Bro, straight up caramel. <laughs> That's wild. With the local restaurants. That do look good, though. I tell you that, boy. That, that stuff do look good, boy. I'm, I'm about ready to dive in with him, man. Uh, uh, Breakfast yeah. here, no better than the fast food. I went to the nearby mall to ask the locals here why all the food down here is so fattening, but I found this instead. I'm not sure who's renting these, but you have giant scooters. So you gotta be lazy as hell to not even walk. <laughs> all right, I'm renting one. <laughs> I can't believe this is real. Let's interview the locals. Do a lot of people rent these scoozers at the mall? Yeah. Yeah? Is this like a McAllen specific thing? Uh, yeah. I, I do feel like Nikocado Avocado right now, I'll be honest. Cruising on a scoozer built to help morbidly obese people move around the mall. That's I thought crazy. I was in Wally for a second. But the question was, do you know why McAllen's the obesity capital? Uh, the food. Okay. And they don't walk. Why are people so big? Uh, people like to eat junk food, like chips or McDonald's and all that stuff. Okay. And then? Out of nowhere, I met this guy. Yeah, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. All right, let's hear it. What's your name? David. David, how you doing, David? Good, I'm a children's book author, actually. Okay, tell me about it. What's going on? Can I have you get the uh, Un momento, por favor. It's to help the nation. You want to go Dang. outside? Yeah, man. You want to hop? Dang, man. No recording inside the mall. I, I understand. It sucks. Because we like getting the content. But I do understand. Fun here? All right, tell me about yourself. What's going on? So yeah, I lost a brother and sister to diabetes. Okay. And oh, wow. so you know, I got diagnosed with type two diabetes as well. And so that inspired me to write a children's book okay. that encourages kids to eat healthy and exercise. The book is called The Adventures of Exo and Sai, like exercise. I like that. And oh, wow. uh, so Exo and Sai live in a town called OB City, like obesity, where the Dang. mayor is Diane Beatties or diabetes. I'm trying to do my part to get people to change the way they eat. Do you have any places maybe you could show us around here, yeah. McAllen? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. You're a blessing. <laughs> you guys seriously are a blessing, man. Right on. So David agreed to show me some of the reasons and places making the people of McAllen so fat. Okay, so from birth to adulthood, why are people getting fat out here? It's Shout out to him. Shout out to David because that's dope for him to be willing to take the time out of his day to show, show him around and kind of help educate the nation uh, and help educate people in that town as well. But... Know what I'm saying? Uh, I can I can't even imagine like losing family members to health related diseases such as diabetes or any other thing, and then him himself being diagnosed with it. So him taking that right and turning it into a position where he wants to be able to help people, help kids learn to eat healthy, help kids learn to exercise. Know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's what we need. 
It's the food, it's the Mexican culture. It's like at the start of every good Mexican dish is a good handful of lard. I'm not, I'm not sure. joking with that. Yes. Refried beans, rice, tortillas. But then you got that mentality where, you know, you have to finish everything on your plate. Yeah. This nice. is, see, see right here, this is, you can see all those pastries right there. And we got a ton of pastries here. Yeah. This is a diabetes speed run, right? Oh yeah. Look at that right there. This place truly is obese, obese. Like uh, over 40% of the population down here in the Rio Grande Valley is either diabetic or pre-diabetic. Look at that. Are Let's you serious? Let's see the taco. Yeah. See the taco. Someone might eat for lunch here. Oh uh, yeah. Look at the calories. God damn. How you doing? Just asking. Yes. What's up? Oh, we're filming a documentary about obesity in America, and we're showcasing the tacos here as a prime facilitator of obesity and in turn premature death. But we'll be quick. Uh, the beef fajita taco has close to a thousand. <laughs> I'm legit surprised that they let him keep recording. That, but it won't, I mean, it's not like watching this is gonna stop people from eating there. You feel me? Calories right there. Got it. Made it to a panaderia. Panaderia, they just serve a lot of uh, Mexican uh, bakery goods. And you'll notice one thing too. No calorie count out here. EBT is a snap also. So you can imagine, you know, the government's allowing people to come and use food stamps. Wow. Wow. EBT here. Yeah. Government is funding diabetes and obesity. Are you ordering here? Um, what are you getting? Por concha, tu concha. Tenemos un investigación diabetes in Nicali. Diabetes, but I, I Tú tienes diabetes? My daughter and my grandson sí. want concha there. Sí. She has diabetes and she's buying the product. Yeah, she's buying, she's buying it, I think, for her daughter, her granddaughter. Yeah. I doubt it. She's probably going to have a snack of that too, right? Yeah, maybe. Where should we head to next? Maybe a taqueria? Okay. Vamos! For a papa taco. Every variation of taco imaginable. I'll try one un birria. Gracias. All right. Exceso calorias, exceso azucares. Yeah, that's nice. Ah, that hits. Big old bite. Yep. I gotta say, I am mind blown because it's so tasty, but I know for a fact this is like thousand calorie new. And after experiencing this fattening food firsthand, David invited me to his house to show me the reason he's so passionate about all this. But as an experiment, I wanted to see if I could snag food at the drive-thru in less than 60 seconds on my way over there, proving that fast food is too easy to get your hands on, thus yeah. making America fat. Just 60 seconds? That's easy money. They ain't really be spitting it out like that. Like, it's crazy how convenient it and easily accessible it is. But uh, yeah, you just gotta, I mean, you gotta learn how to count your calories. You gotta learn what your body needs. You gotta learn how to exercise. I would say exercise, what is it, 80-20 rule? I'm not sure. Uh, but most of it, would, in the kitchen, bro, like you're not gonna get in shape, you're not gonna get fit until you start eating better. You can work out all you want, but if you have a crappy diet, then it's, it's just not gonna happen for you. So you gotta start eating better first and foremost, uh, but then exercise on top of that. Just to show you how dangerously quick fast food is, I wanna see if I can get my fast food order before I share with you this video sponsor, Great Shadow Legends. I'm a Hello. Skill. Can I get one McDouble, please? That'll be it. The free to play mobile game with over 80. If you haven't joined Raid yet, click the link and other ink Skip right now, sponsor. thus leading to a nation full of obese people. After proving food is too accessible in America, I had made it to David's house so he could show me why he's so passionate about destroying obesity. Started uh, doing it for these two people right here. That's my brother and sister, uh, Mary and Henry, who, who passed away wow. yeah. from diabetes. So um, I don't want anybody to have to go through what my family's had to go through, losing yeah. a brother and a sister, having another sister go blind. It, it's a really wow. tough thing to see with the people that you love most. Eat healthy, exercise, and, and good things are gonna happen. Okay, America has hope. America does have hope. After seeing obesity kill David's family, I flew to Florida to meet a guy named Mark who was on TLC's My 600 Pound Life and oh weighed over God. 700 pounds. At the end of the show, he lost 200 pounds and the doctor told him the only way he could lose more weight was to get a stomach reduction surgery. We're in Orlando, Florida. We're meeting up with Mark. See what a day in his life looks like. Right now, he's 487 pounds. We're gonna okay. see what got him here and what advice you might have for others. Yeah, how you doing? So your name's Mark. Mark, yes sir. You were on the show, My 600 Pound Life, on TLC. Right. You lose 184 pounds, you go to the doctor, and he says, hey, now you're at the point where we want you to do the weight reduction surgery, right? Yeah, I did everything the doctor asked, I lost weight. And he's like, okay, cool, you're approved for surgery. It's like, well, hold up. I'm kind of feeling this right now, let me let me do this. He's like, okay, we'll go again, go lose another 50 pounds, and I lost like 40 pounds, you know? It's like, hey. okay, cool, great job, let's go get 
it's, let's get you in the surgery. And the surgery is a stomach reduction surgery? Yeah, they cut your stomach. Okay. He said, I have a 5% chance with the surgery and a 0% chance without. Okay. And I knew that my work ethic alone is going to eliminate that 5% gap. So sure. you. When did the weight get put on? The fucking pandemic broke me. Okay. And this is where everything goes to shit. This is it, man. Okay. Let's walk through. That's cool. You lose your job and you're gaining a bunch of weight. Okay. My life consisted of here to there, to the bathroom, to my chair, out here, to the front door. Are you just locked in here depressed? I'm pretty much just locked in here depressed. This is my world. For me to go all the way, all the way to the other side of this little baby fucking pool right Yeah. Here, fucking killed me. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So, this is the... That's crazy, but shout out to him for right making that change, bro. Uh, absolutely love that. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Anyone who's who's willing to kind of look into the mirror and look at this, say, like, I don't want this. Like, I want something different. Like, uh, because, I mean, your life's at stake. Like, like, your life is literally at stake. Eating the way I see a lot of people eat and not doing anything. Like, not extra. Like I said, it's 80-20. But even if you're going to eat like crap, at least do some exercising. At least. <laughs> uh, if you're gonna eat like crap you're still gonna it's still gonna be big and it's still gonna be unhealthy but at the very minimum you're getting exercise in graveyard of bad memories right here this couch this is where life was for a long time yeah i used to be an athlete man yeah like i could do the splits now can i see are you serious? God damn. But I wanted to understand how Mark got to 700 pounds in the first place. Can we pull up DoorDash? This is the COVID depression menu. We got McDonald's, 7-Eleven, McDonald's. McDonald's. Two sausage biscuit, two sausage McMuffin, sure. hash brown, Dr. Pepper, that's f***ing breakfast. Wendy's, Baconator, then a Baconator combo. You get, the you get two of them. Little Caesars, pizza. And this is all on the same day. Yeah. As soon so as they contacted the me back, I was like, all right, it's it's time to go to work. Got it. Going to work at the time was literally me. One. Basically, Mark is saying that when my 600 pound life asked him to be on the show, he knew he had to get healthy or he was gonna die. I I get up and I put on my shoes, socks, head out the door, I go to the gym. See, this is my breakfast right here. I'm not trying to lose 50 pounds to look good on a vacation. I'm fighting for my life. You tell somebody I'm laying in the hospital bed that if you work hard, you're determined, and you stay consistent, you can change your life. I guarantee you every single person would stand up and fight to do that. So I went to the gym with Mark to experience an average day in his fight to become healthy again. Drove by eight times, took me the ninth time to come in. Let's go, Mark. Prove this. Holy. I'm gonna pass it. Gassed after Mark's workout, I had a lot more sympathy for what he goes through on a daily basis. And as Mark and I drove back to his parents' house, Mark did something he thought he'd never be able to do again. Oh, oh. What's up? I don't think. Oh, seatbelt? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit on me, though. Six minute drive. Okay. Hey. Oh, okay. I haven't worn a seatbelt in years, bro. Actually? For real, yeah. Hey. That's gonna be great. I kind of feel almost normal. Hell yeah. Don't, don't give up, man. With the click of Mark's seatbelt echoing in my ears, I, I realized that if a 700 pound man can turn his life around, then so can America. Facts. I said, come on, go for a jog or something. No, nah, but yeah, you can't change your life, bro. I mean, guy was over 700 pounds. See, you see him working hard every day to, to, you know what I'm saying? Fight for his life. Like, you're going to have, it's going to be a fight. You're, you're going to have to fight for it, but it's a fight worth worth having. That's all we got. You guys got a favorite video suggestion. You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy, Dino. Out.